Hello, this is the Provoked Prawn, here to show you how to wire and set up Noctua's Chromax Black fans. These are the AF12X25 fans, the 120mm versions, which I'm going to show you how to set up in your system and wire them in different ways. Now these fans come with some interesting little coloured anti-vibration mounts, so you can choose your own setup. And I've put them inside the Leon Lee Lancor 207 to be able to demonstrate how to mount them on a radiator, how to set them up in your case, and how to wire them into your system and more, including things you need to do in the BIOS to make them run nicely. The fans themselves come with a small little connector on the fan and then a long extension cable, as well as those anti-vibration mounts that I showed you which you can choose to swap out. The wiring itself is fairly straightforward. You plug the extension cable into the fan, and then that needs to connect up to your motherboard in order to be able to control the fan. This is pretty simple. You basically need to plug them into a chassis fan header, as you can see down here, CHA fan, and you'll have multiples of these and various different points on your motherboard. You're looking for a four pin connector. Sometimes it's called chassis fan, sometimes system fan. It may vary from motherboard to motherboard, but you'll often find them along the bottom row of the motherboard, down the sides, at the top perhaps. So you can see various different shots of where you're likely to find them on different motherboards here and examples of that. And that's where you can install the case fans and connect them up. So just to show you the wiring logic of that outside of the build so you can see nice and easily how that would work. Obviously you need to plug one fan into one port and the next fan into the next, connecting them up and using up the various ports on the motherboard. As you can imagine, after a while you end up with a lot of different connections. If you're putting a lot of these fans in your system, you may end up plugging in a lot of cables to a lot of different places on your motherboard, which doesn't look that neat. It might also lead to a problem where you just plain run out of system fan headers. Now you can alternatively get splitter cables which you can use or you can get Noctua's NAFH1 fan hub. Now this allows you to connect up to eight PWM fans onto this fan hub which itself has little magnets on the back so it easily installs in your case. So you can plug eight fans into this, eight of these Chromax black fans will connect to this. Then the thing requires power and then it has its own connection which runs from the control box to the motherboard. So I'm going to show you the wiring for this. Now this obviously makes life easier because it means that you can have the cables at the back of the case and you can neaten things up. It means wiring is a bit more straightforward, tidier and potentially easier, especially if you've got a motherboard with few ports. So you plug your fans into it, then you need a SATA power cable, which is the same one you'd use for hard disk drives and SSDs. And that comes with your power supply unit. You'd run that from the power supply unit to this little fan hub. You can only plug that power cable in one way because it has a special shape to it. You need to make sure that is plugged in because that will power the fan hub, enabling it to power the fans because obviously each of the fans draws a certain amount of power. And so without it, they just won't run. So you need to make sure it's connected up that way. And then you'd plug your fans into this instead of into the motherboard. This makes life a lot easier in terms of cable management, but also just simply controlling them and setting them up. It's a lot less hassle and theoretically an excellent purchase if you're throwing in loads of these fans into your system, although it might not be necessary. It really depends on your own personal preference. And then you have this cable, which is marked as an extension cable, which runs from the controller, so from that fan hub, and then that then connects up to your motherboard on the same sort of port that you would use for the fans individually. So you need a PWM controllable chassis fan header or system fan header on your motherboard. You need to make a note of which one it is so that you know which one it is in the BIOS. And I'll show you the BIOS settings later on to be able to tweak this. And I'll leave timestamps so you can jump to relevant points in the video as well, if you've not noticed that already. And then what you need to do is just simply set it up and run those into your case. Now, if you want to use Chromax black fans on your radiator, I want to show you how to do that as well. So here I have the Lian Lee Hydro Shift, which I'm going to remove the standard fans from and install the Chromax black fans on it. Now, the Hydro Shift comes with daisy chained fans, so this actually makes the cabling a bit messier, but it does mean that the fans are uniform throughout the case. So if you want to do this, you want to make all the fans in your system the same and you want to make the use of Noctua's obviously high performance fans, then you can do this quite easily. Basically just swap out the fans, use the same radiator screws to install them onto the radiator. And while doing this, don't forget to run the cables from the fan in the right direction so that they'll be facing towards the back of the case so that you can keep them nice and neat 
and then make use of those anti-vibration mounts as well. You can get extra things installed on the back of the fans, for example, to quieten things down. And then we need to sort out the cabling. Now, obviously, it's going to be a bit more complicated than it was before, but hopefully I'll make it a bit more straightforward for you because what we're going to do is going to take the three fans that are connected to the radiator and connect them to the motherboard. Now, you can use splitters like Noctua's own splitters that you can see here, Y splitters that essentially allow you to put two fans into one connector. You can also get triple splitters where you can put three fans into a single header. It's worth noting, but I only have these Y cables on hand to be able to show you. So we can plug two of the fans into one of these connectors and then that'll obviously power two of those fans and then you have a third fan with an additional cable. So now there's only two cables instead of three. And this is useful because we can use a CPU fan header and the CPU optional header or CPU fan two, as it's marked here on this motherboard, which then means that you can plug those fans into that. And then obviously when your CPU is getting hot, the BIOS will just simply spin those fans a bit faster, which should cool them down. And that's ideal because it will then obviously blow more air through the radiator and cool the coolant down inside of the pump. Now, the pump itself will obviously want to connect to the AIO pump header on the motherboard, so you'll need to make sure you connect that as well. But then you've got the fans and the pump all controlled by the motherboard, and hopefully the cooling should work quite well in this instance. Now, it's one thing that is worth noting, and it's important to bear this in mind, is just how many fans you can connect to one header. If you use multiple splitters, like three fan splitter, you need to know about how much power draw there is. If you refer to your motherboard manual, you see a list of the max power and current that you can get from each of the headers. So you can see one amp and 12 watts in this instance on the motherboard I'm using. And you'll see the fans themselves use 0.14 amps and 1.68 watts. So it's perfectly fine to connect that many to a single header, whether it's Y cable or a triple splitter. Now I'm installing the fans at the bottom of the case. Make sure when you're installing the fans that you use a logic to them where you're using intake fans, usually at the front and the bottom. So in this instance, fans face downwards to pull air from below and fan blades would face outwards on the front of the case to pull air in from the front. If you can see the back like this, then it's pulling air into the case and then that will obviously be blowing onto the GPU. I've got a separate guide on how to set your fans up if you're curious about airflow and need to know about that. So I'll link to that video in the description. And then obviously we're going to install the fans. Now you can either use the cabling directly to the motherboard as I've shown, or you can use the fan hub, plugging that into the motherboard and obviously plugging the fans into it and making sure it's powered. Whichever works best for you, depending on how many fans you're putting into your system or your motherboard. But then once you've set that up, don't forget that you do need to make sure you've got SATA power if you are using the fan hub here. And then whatever you're doing, you want to go into the BIOS settings. So mash delete on your keyboard when you start your PC up and then find the fan tuning section. What you want to do there is to make sure you make a note of the fan headers that you are using. Go into those fan headers on the settings and make sure you set them to PWM mode. That will mean that you can control the speed of them and have the connectivity you need to make sure they're running at the right speed. Then you can adjust the fan profiles, whether you're using the tuning within the BIOS or within Windows or creating your own custom profiles. You can do that here, but you do need to make sure you put them into PWM mode. So just go through the headers that you used on your motherboard, on the CPU fan, CPU optional, and whatever system fan header you used, and then make sure you save that profile setup and that should ensure that the fans run nicely and don't get too loud and are also easy to control in both ways. You can see them all spinning in the BIOS here as well, so you can see that they are working and you can see how fast each of them is running too, which can be handy. And then I recommend just going into Windows and running some tests, do some benchmarking, use OCCT, Cinebench, Hardware Info 64, for example, just to make sure that you're not getting too hot under load. But what you should find is these Noctua fans run nice and cool and keep things efficiently running in your system. And obviously you've got a really stealthy build by the end of it. This land cool turned out pretty nice and looks very stealthy when it was finally finished. If you want to see that separate video, check out the links in the description to it, as well as the specs of this build, if you're curious, will be listed down below as well. And thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, 
and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos, you might well find them interesting or useful, and most importantly, have a great life.